TJ Kelly is here with me and joining us for this week's Chalk Talk, sponsored by the Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan, is the head coach at Rochester Hills Stony Creek, the current BCAM Mr. Basketball Chairman, Steve Norgrove. Thank you so much for joining us on Hang Time. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. All right. I want to start by talking about your background. How did you come up in the game? Where would you coach? Who were your mentors? Uh, well, it starts back when I was in uh, seventh and eighth grade at St. Anne's and Warren. And Greg Essler was, was one of our, you know, our coaches. And he really inspired us. He was as tough on us back then as he is now. And I always respected that about him. And then as I came up through the ranks, there were many coaches that had influence. But uh, just thinking about the question, one coach that really influenced me was Dean Smith. I, I just I envied Dean Smith. I sent a letter one year when I was in college at Western, and he said, come on down and work camp. And I, I just remember he would never, he would never probably pick me out of a crowd or know who I was. But number one, he made me feel special. And number two, he gave you time when you, you talked to him. And, and I'll never forget that, that he was never too big for his own position and that translated to coach Williams and I've been working at Carolina's camp ever since and uh, just the connection with coaches there and, and now that I've been I'm considered a veteran coach a lot of my mentors are guys that I work with now so it's it's great the friendships and and the bonds I've made through this great game absolutely Absolutely. You know, BCAM is, uh, you know, the largest uh, organization, I, I still believe, it, in the country as far as yes. basketball coaches. And, and that really says something for, the, you know, the love of the game and how you guys spread yourselves out. Um, just real quickly before we get into our, our main topic, though, talk about your experience uh, with Coach Williams and, and being at the North Carolina camp. That sounds like a blast. Oh, he, he, he was fantastic. And uh, I was actually down there for a while before he came back to be Carolina's coach. And uh, just for instance, I was thanking him at a particular time for, hey, coach, thanks for having me down. He said, Steve, you're, you're from Michigan. How far are you from Ford Field? He said, we're playing Michigan State there in February. I said, coach, I'll be there. He said, yeah, you will, except you're going to be sitting with us. So then I called a week before, and he got tickets. And, and that's what I mean, just about, you know, they don't have to do that. But then you start to realize why they're in the places they are certain coaches because the way they act, the way they behave. And I would say the same for Coach Izzo. He's been nothing, nothing but gracious, allowing me to come to practices. Uh, he, he let me introduce my daughters to him. And it's, just, it's no surprise that these men are where they are when you get to meet them and really see their character. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. All right, let's take a bite into the uh, current 2022 House Ram Mr. Basketball finalists. That's why we're all here, of course. This year's class has some West and some East representation. Uh, from the West side, Grand Rapids Catholic Central's Jack Karasinski. Uh, Grand Rapids Northview's Kyler Vanderjat. Uh, from the Metro Detroit area, Ferndale's Trayvon Lewis. Uh, Orchard Lake St. Mary's Kareem Rozier. And from Detroit, Martin Luther King, Chauncey Willis Jr. Uh, again, we're joined today by the chairman, Steve Norgrove. Talk about the process and how you ultimately landed with these five candidates. Well, the, to start the process, we, we go back. So I try to work a year ahead of time so that we have eyes on all these candidates because I really don't think it's fair to, to speak about candidates if we have not had eyes on them. And I'm saying we, I'm saying multiple sets of eyes. I have people I trust. I have people I talk to. I have a committee. I don't really divulge the names of those individuals because then they could be under scrutiny, and I don't think that's fair right. um, to them. And they might be accused of liking someone, not liking someone. And, and I and I just I, I use people that I respect. And what we try to do, BCAM has an event now in the in June where we can get our eyes on a lot of these players going head to head with other great players. Um, with the way the NCAA has transformed it. And, and then we just start chipping away at the list. And, and the one thing I wanna reiterate, because sometimes people feel if they're left off the list, that that is somehow a knock on a player. These are very high level basketball players we're talking about. All these candidates are exceptional basketball players. And it's very difficult to, to come down to the top five. Oh, yeah. And I know sometimes and scrutiny with who's picked and who's not. They're still fantastic basketball players. This year in particular, we felt we had a pretty the list I've 
sent to coaches and said, send me back names. That, that these same names appeared on multiple lists of very highly respected coaches. And, and so we felt this year in particular was a, it was a more of a clean cut maybe than so in some of the past years. Hey, I, I don't envy you your position at all. I think that, uh, <laughs> You know, it, it thanks is for difficult. stepping up, coach. Yeah, and thanks for stepping up. I know I've talked with, uh, you know, quite a few parents, quite a few uh, coaches. You know, I read social media and stuff like that. Uh, to me, I was like, I was like, well, thanks for watching the show. You know, hey, yeah. state champs. You know, yeah, I'm, yeah. Hey, you know, I, uh, so it kind of put us put me in the position to catch some slack. Uh, so I know that you guys catch even that much more. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm I really like the candidates that you have this year. I think that. You know, and when I've looked at, you know, let's say this as far as explaining um, why the candidates were there, uh, I think that tradition has shown that kids that are at schools for four years, uh, maybe there's one transfer in there, but they're not multiple transfers. Um, you know, character, um, I don't, and to be honest, I don't think that any of the kids in Michigan's 2022 class who are on this list or might have been considered have any off the court issues or anything like that. And I think they're standout um, individuals yeah. and they'll go on to be uh, that and later on in life outside of basketball. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a testament for what, what you guys have done, but you know, hats off to the five that have been selected. And then, uh, you know, uh, there are multiple other players that could have been on that list and they were, and they, you know, definitely deserve their due as well. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to see them at the Breslin center. Um, and they can raise, a. Uh, state championship trophy and I know that in the past you know we've had some kids uh you know I remember specifically Tory Jackson um with uh Saginaw Buena Vista when they went up losing when David the year David Cool wind up winning um I want to say like Deshaun Sims was in that in that group uh maybe Tom Herzog or whatever but right. um you know I remember you know Tory Jackson going out there and saying hey you know what I've got multiple state championships too and he kind of you know the microphone post game kind of gave him uh, a voice for why he maybe he should have won Mr. Basketball through the questions after the game but you know the, all the kids are deserved and I think that uh you know you guys are just doing a fantastic job and and to cut it from five where it used to be 10 hey remember you know Brad Redford and Draymond Green they're only two candidates so uh, you, sometimes you should be happy with what you get. And I hate to sound like a 20th century uh, old man when I say that, but, you know, it, sometimes it is what it is. And, uh, yeah, hats off to BCAM. Well, you brought up a couple great points. First of all, I, I currently enjoy the fact that we're voting before the state tournament because I don't always think a candidate based on their senior year should necessarily just be based on – a run of three or four games. I know that matters, but I think it's a body of work, number one. Number two, we have, some people forget this is coming from the coaches association. We're not a news outlet. We're not, you know, right. we're just, we're coaches. So our viewpoint tends to be a little different than others because you brought up the, the transfers. And, and, I, and I can honestly say it's hard to track players down in the summer sometimes. We're trying to get our eyes on someone. All of a sudden, they're at a different school. They have a different role. Something might have changed. Well, their stock may go up or down based on the experience that we're viewing them through. So maybe it's no fault of their own, but it's just the nature of the situation we're in. And then you mentioned the five candidates. We really don't have a hard, fast rule of how many candidates there are. I know we try to, we try to keep a nice sample size of candidates um, but we try to find that clear line that just kind of separates players is you can go with the best, the best players we can come up with as seniors at this point in their careers. Well, and no question, I think you guys have done a fantastic job. You know, all of these teams, you know, as far as like our rankings, they've all, you know, been in the top 10. Uh, you know, Northview having an outstanding season and Vanderjet is so integral to, uh, you know, the success that they've had and how far they will go. It's going to be very interesting. I mean, Trayvon Lewis, from the first, like one of the first games of the season, he hits a bucket to send the game to double overtime uh, against De La Salle. De La Salle. 
Yep. And, uh, you know, you could just see it was just, you know, clutch. Uh, and, you know, we and then I got to see at Operation Friendship, which was fantastic, Kareem yes. Rozier and Chauncey Willis going head to head down to the wire. Both guys so pivotal in how their teams uh, operate and getting other players involved. And, um, yeah, man, I, and, and Grand Rapids Catholic Central, what can you say? All they do is win. Uh, just an outstanding organization. They've been our second-ranked team all season long, uh, practically. So. Yeah, number one yeah. and number two. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and Kierazinski is just the, the model of consistency. I love that player. Yeah, I, if I could step in real quick, one thing that I I got to I, I give big props to are the high school coaches that know that they have players. Um, you know what Brandon Guyton was doing with uh, over in Grand Rapids, and then we have the Motor City Round Ball Classic here. We have Horatio's events, but you know just in working with the scheduling, you know I'm, I always try to say you know if they ask me. Uh, hey, let's see if we can get this Mr. Basketball candidate versus this Mr. Basketball candidate just to make it, you know, more efficient for you guys, uh, you know, or for, you know, whether it be college coaches, because BCAM has, you have college coaches, you have middle school coaches, you have high school coaches. So all, uh, uh, a vast set of eyes can go out there and see for themselves with what's what you were talking about. And then I also think that during the summer, uh, what you guys have done, uh, you know, and with some help with the NCAA and the new rules, um, just being able to have, uh, you know, the reaching higher, which was used, was a one-day event, and then it evolved to a team camp. And I think that that team camp is great just because you have a, t a lot of voters that are going to be like we'd had at Grand Valley State this past year or this past summer where – you had the Mr. Basketball candidates there, and you could put eyes on them right there. And and, it, and what you were saying, you guys, I, I think that it's special that you guys take the take that extra time to make sure that you're seeing players rather than just voting on somebody. Hey, that's uh, you know, I I know this coach, and you know he's playing over here, and he's my buddy, and so I'll vote for him. Um, and so I think that you know, with everybody getting to judge, or let's say this, put their you know their own voting and stuff like that through their own eyes or voting with their own eyes. Let me say it like that is, is, uh, is special. And uh, with as many voters as you have, um, I, you know, just being able to put everything down in that sample size, what Lauren was talking about is, is great as well as what you were talking about, but yeah, yeah. Hats off. And uh, I, I'll tell you this, Michigan is a lot of talent in 2023, a lot of talent in 2024. And, Wow, I'm going to games and I'm seeing all these freshmen playing. So that's just alluding, alluding to what I think 2025 will be. I, I agree 100. percent There's some great young players, and to allude back to what you were speaking to at the, at the team camp, what I enjoy is being there, and I can talk with an opponent's coach instantly right after an event. And what some people discount, I love talking to players when they walk off the court, and I say. Hey man, you know this guy's pretty good. What what, what are your thoughts? And if a, and if a young man looks at me and says that's the best point guard I've ever played against, that's the craftiest big man I've ever played against, uh, you know that goes a long way to, to to helping us, you know, determine our list and having all those coaches in one location and they can, they can kind of watch players and and you could walk over and say hey could you please come over to this court I need you to put eyes on someone. Um, because with video technology, we can see players play, but we really don't like to watch players through a computer. You need to be present. You need to see their physical presence. You need to see the dynamic of how they are with their teams. So a lot goes into this. And, and, and I kind of feel like this is, this is my, I was an assistant for a couple of years doing this. Now, now I'm the chairman. I feel like I'm explaining the NCAA tournament on that Sunday, who's in, who's out. And, you know, the committee kind of sits back with their picks. But I will say this. What it tells me is, number one, people care. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with good conversation about great kids. Yeah. I mean, yes. there's nothing wrong with that. And I also want to go back to some people think you have to have a scholarship in order to be on this list. Chauncey Willis is unsigned. I mean, he, he he's... There was talk football, basketball. Well, you know what? That did not deter us from what he has done basketball wise. So some people might think the level of scholarship matters. That's not always the case. We have proven it this year. And there are times where some players are fantastic for the state of Michigan, but maybe not fantastic elsewhere. So 
we, you know, we, we try to do the best we can with the information we have and, and then move forward. And in our organization, we do so much behind the scenes. I can't applaud Dan Young enough for what he does fighting for basketball in the state. And I know we absorb a lot of criticism, especially during COVID when we are fighting like crazy and, and people have no idea. But politically, we can't come out and say what we're doing. Right. It's just it, it's bad for an organization to publicly defend itself. So I just my hat goes off to Dan Young and, and our board of directors for for how we navigated COVID and, and how we're coming through this now. And some of the things that are going to be announced in the future to come are a big result of BCAM being involved with the MHSAA and Mark Ewell being open to, to to bettering our game. So we appreciate him as well. Absolutely, and we appreciate you coming on with us today. And uh, for those who just uh, uh, want to understand the timeline, give us a timeline on when we will know who this year's Mr. Basketball will be in the state of Michigan. Well, we, we should be learning that within the next uh, about week and a half, uh, two weeks. Uh, an article will come out, so sometimes that article gets delayed, but we wait for the news media to release the article. Um, Mick McCabe and the Free Press has been very instrumental in supporting uh, our Mr. Basketball candidates. And then we get to go back to the, to the Free Press to actually you know, present the award at the location it's been presented at so many times. And again, I can't say enough about the support of, of the Free Press and Mick McCabe and, and just bettering you know, the game of basketball. And individuals like TJ Kelly that just um, are there to support kids and, and try to uplift kids. We Absolutely. appreciate that as coaches. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, and I know Stony Creek didn't get where they wanted to be this season, uh, knocked out of districts this week by by Rochester, but just having a full season, giving your seniors an opportunity to really experience uh, a full campaign in front of the fans, that's the most important in my eyes, right? Absolutely. We talk a lot about the journey, the ups and downs. I mean, not every team is going to have a great season record-wise, but that can't take away from the experiences you have along the way. We took the boys down and played against Oxford at Little Caesars Arena, which is a tremendous experience. We played Troy in a coaches versus cancer game and, and had all the players um, do the one team bas- BCAM unity and uh, play for someone or in honor of someone. So it's just those moments along the way that are special. And, and with our seniors, you know, they, they were district champions last year. So even though this year did not go the way they had planned, you know, we couldn't ask for a better group to help guide us this year and navigate some of the ups and downs of the season. And, and they're still leaving as champions. No one can take the numbers off the banners they put up. So I'm very sure. proud of those those individuals. BCAM has introduced, officially launched the one team campaign this season uh, in an effort to promote unity <laughs> among teams, schools, and the communities. They've encouraged, you know, things like standing together at the anthem, uh, things of that nature, just looking to promote that we are all one team and BCAM always looking to emphasize unity. You had a, a unity event, which you alluded to. Uh, just talk about it real quickly on what took place. Well, it's inspired because I'm so close with Coach Fralick at Troy, and and he's had he's had some health issues, and and we all know people that have had health issues with with, with cancer. My mom's uh, has had cancer three different on three different occasions, and um, a, a former assistant coach has had cancer. A player of mine has had um, um, brain cancer, and he's now in a he's now a manager at Oakland University. So this has impacted all of us, and and what we did is we took each player and lined up one player from every team across the gym floor. And I read out who they were playing in honor of or in memory of, and that player stepped forward and waved. And it didn't matter whether they were with Troy or they were with Stony Creek. We were united in that moment and, and players could, could share who they're playing for. And uh, it, was just, it, it, it was just a great tribute, I think, to many people. And just to acknowledge people's struggles and to acknowledge you know, some of the pain and some of the joy that these things can bring us. All right, fantastic. One final question, kind of a poll that we've been doing all season long. Your thoughts on the shot clock, Steve. We have seen several trials with this over the course. That's funny. Everybody kind of gets that same look like when I when we ask this question. Uh, but we just have been kind of running it. You know, would you like to see it uh, implemented in high school basketball in Michigan? Yay or nay? Well, I'm I'm – Right now, I'm in between. I'd like to see it implemented because I believe it'll speed up the game. 
and it will cause more situations that will force our players to change their skill set, meaning you'll see a big handling the ball at the end of the shot clock, so maybe they got to put it on the floor and go score. So I think it will enhance players' skill levels at our lower levels coming up. I think if it's first implemented, it's going to be very sloppy because we haven't worked with it. And my other question is, I really wonder how many games are impacted by a shot clock. Currently, I don't think it's enough to force a shot clock. But what do we see on social media? The one time that the shot, the ball is held out of you know yeah. thousands of games it would have made a difference. So right. I, I do want it in regards to, I think it will increase the skill set of our athletes and put us and, and force players to do things they normally wouldn't do. And also it'll force coaches to have to coach more throughout the game because you'll have to coach end of shot clock situations, not just end of quarters. So I do think down the line it will better our game, but I, I do think there will be some growing pains. So I know I've kind of skirted the question there, but uh, so yeah. I'm kind of too full on. Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 with you 100. Uh, percent I think it works um, in certain situations. Uh, I, I I I I dread the day of of seeing like a a state championship game where you know the halftime score is eight to nine. You know, right. just because of teams holding the ball. I think that, you know, just because a lot of times those teams are more competitive, um, that they're going to go back and forth. Um, but I remember, uh, I want to say maybe it was Detroit Cooley versus Country Day, you know, and I think the halftime score might have been 4-2, to two, you know, and uh, and uh, Ben Kelso was very happy with his two-point lead um, at the half. Right. Um, I you know that doesn't necessarily work out for the fans, right. um, but yeah, I'm I'm with you. I remember I kind of monitored some things um, with the Motor City Round Ball Classic, and you know there was only one or two times you know over our what 27 games that that we actually had teams that were holding on holding on to the ball you know longer than 30 seconds, longer than 35 seconds. But those those were at the end of the half or at the end of the game when it's kind of leading, you know, when hey, we need this bucket, we want to get this last bucket before we go into halftime, or we're going for the game-winning shot. The other thing is, and I think George Ward elect, uh, referred to this, is one thing I do like about the shot clock, it rewards defense. Um, you know, hey, if, we're, we're, if we're moving and we're doing what we're supposed to do, then, yeah, I, th- I think that it's it's – it, it, it rewards the, that, you know, it's advantageous to the better defensive teams um, rather than just going up and down the court. Hey, sometimes you got to sit down and lock down, and, you know, that's very much a, a basketball. And the, I think the wild thing is we're sitting here with Coach Norgrove who, who sat with, the, with one of the inventors of the four corners with Dean Smith, right. you know, who brought you in as a wee lad, you know, and you get, you know, and then you get to see, you get to see guys, you know, uh, the evolution of basketball, right. but then you also get to sit with the guy and learn a lot from the guy who, you know, why the, why the shot clock was implemented. Um, you know, but I, I hats off to, you know, I know we've talked a lot about you going to North Carolina in the past and, you know, just the evolution of everything. I mean, I, you were you were there when Hubert Davis was a player, you know, and now he's the head coach. And so I, th- I think that that stuff is is huge and it's great to see guys uh, have hair and then lose hair, uh, go from, you know, uh, no grays to all grays. Some people like Lauren here, they get to keep their hair the same yes. since, you know, they were 15 years old and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, yeah hats off to him. It's and my curse. You know, <laughs> hey, you, you and Pat Sajak, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it's some great, it's some great stuff to, uh, you know, to see talks and the evolution of what will be Michigan basketball. Well, can I, can I add to that TJ, because we do have a mentorship program with BCAM and I know you've discussed that with some other people. Yep. Coach Mike Masucci is, is yeah. our lead there. Yeah. He but, was on um, last week. I yeah. I don't think enough young coaches send coaches a letter and say, can I come work basketball camp? Right. Mm-hmm. It, it, Cause it, it's not about the money. You're not going to get paid anything that's worthwhile to be honest with you. But it's just about being around other coaches, seeing how things are organized, watching how people carry themselves. I don't think enough young coaches uh, are valuing the mentorship that's available to them that they really could dive into. Uh, I mean, go see a practice of a coach you admire. Schedule yours after school so you can go see someone in the evenings. But I'm really excited about the mentorship program because I yeah. think it will really enhance us growing our game and having more qualified coaches, uh, yeah. you know, get, yeah. get behind the whistle and, and start really helping kids. Okay. 
Yep. And you never know who you're going to meet. Uh, man, I remember watching this kid who plays for Gonzaga right now, uh, Drew Timmy. And I'm, I think I was down in Texas or something like that. I'm watching an event, and I found out that he's from Mus- Muskegon. I reach out to Jeff Smith, uh, the current Oakland assistant, yeah. who was at Central Michigan, and, you know, and I'm and I'm talking with him real quick. And he goes, he goes, yeah, I know his dad. We were uh, we were roommates at Central Michigan's uh, at at a, at a, a team camp uh, years years ago. You know, is like a co- uh, coaching clinic, and so you never know who you're going to run across. And I and I tell you what, I think that, you know, when you you know, being me being in this for almost 20 years, it's great to see people that you might not have seen in 10 years, 15 years, or however it winds up working, and that just that camaraderie. And we have a lot more in basketball that brings us together, whether it be uh, coaches for cancer, whether it be, you know, the uh, BCAM 1. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I yep, think that it's so you. important, uh, you know, in the fraternity that we're in, as well as, you know, with the women, with their, with, you know, as a sorority. Um, but, you know, we have a lot more in common than we have that then we don't have in common. And I think that that's important to bring out. TJ, TJ, uh, Lamonta Stone was my roommate back in 1993 at U of M's camp when the Fab Five was there and Coach Fisher was the coach. So yeah. that's where I met him was at the dorm room, setting our bags down to hustle to the gym to go run a station. Yeah. So it, it's, it's just amazing. amazing. And, and then I'm walking with him uh, two summers, you know, two summers ago in, in our, our unified coaches walk in, in the city of Detroit. So it, yep. it's just amazing how back in 93 we meet, we stay connected. Actually, I went, went and watched his son play last night. Yeah. So just the, yeah, the way you he, evolve through those connections is just, I'm very blessed with it, I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. he's been commenting on some games uh, recently too. So uh, Levante's yep. still staying active. Yep. And uh, hey, Coach Norbert, thank you so much for coming on Hang Time today. We really appreciate it and we really appreciate you. Thank you.